we're going to rise to the top and we're going to live in the abundance of God. a very good day to everybody it's good to have you with me again this week uh, it's been a week that i didn't wasn't on live stream but here we are again back in the studio we are ready to go and it's going to be a great day uh, this is the day the lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in this day so praise the lord listen i want you to quickly do me one favor just click the share button and let your friends and family join on and be part of this great, exciting uh, half an hour that I have with you today. I'm going to show you some some personal things, you know, things that has happened in my in my life in the past <laughs> ten days. You know, you'll see uh, my child Michal, my younger son, got married. I'm going to show you some photos uh, and just a lot of things. So. Uh, get ready, be a part of my life, be a part of this live stream and just interact. And then I'm going to share the word of the Lord with you. 
And I want to speak today on the hindrances to destinies. What are those things that stops us to fulfill our destinies? Destiny is so beautiful. Destiny is one of those things that you, you know, once you've found your destiny, you embrace it, you love it, you take care of it, you nurture it. And yet there are some people that struggle to find their destinies and there are hindrances for them in order to get to that place of destiny. So I want to solve that problem through the word of the Lord today and just uh, get into the word, get into this time of fellowship with you. So um, I want you, if you can, just share the feed with your friends and your family. Let's put the chats up here. There we go. Now we can see who's online. Come on, greet your fellow brother and brother, sisters there. <laughs> it will just be great to, to be on. Well, Charmaine, good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you're watching from. Julian, good day. Sunita, good day. Sue, uh, Sapirwe, Nicoline, um, Salvi, I think, Annette, Jacob. Wonderful to see you all on from Umkumas. Salvi, that's wonderful. Middleburg, Eastern Cape, that's wonderful. Um, Nicoline watching from Comga. All right. I am not sure where that is. Maybe all the name changes. Let me know a little bit. Give me some of the old names. Uh, and then I have here, obviously, we have Julian from Cape Town. Marion is on. Tabele is on, Dino is on, Nikuleko is on, Lorraine is on. Good afternoon, everybody. Michelle, Michelle from um, Titsikama. Hey, need to get there. Uh, Nico from Pretoria, Johannesburg, Clarksdorf. Hello, Shirley. Good afternoon, Nico. Milani. Good afternoon from Clarksdorf. Love Clarksdorf. Manny. Good afternoon. Wonderful. So many people are on. Praise the Lord. Well, we haven't seen each other for a whole week. Feels like months if I don't get onto this live. Actually, I was on last week, but just very informal there from the patio in Bloberg. What a great time we had there. And um, I want to ask you this. Later this afternoon, I'm going to go live again with my phone. Okay, so... The purpose for that is I'm going to show you our new church property and what's happening there. So don't miss the, the next feed today. Probably in about next two, three hours, I'll be on site. and I'm going to show you what's happening. A lot of developments have taken place. So make sure to tune in. Please share the feed with your friends and family when I'm live again. And um, it's just going to be incredible. So you're just going to love it and show you what's happening there. So make sure to click the notification button on YouTube and on Facebook. Subscribe so you don't miss out on these exciting events. All right. All right. So there's so many people. Blanche is on. Llewellyn is on. Port Elizabeth. Saldana is on. Uh, okay. Nicoline. Thank you. Comga is a town in Amatholi, Amatholi District Municipality in the Eastern Cape Province of South Africa. Hmm. Wonderful. Didn't know that. And well, praise the Lord for that. Johannesburg South and um, Limpopo is on. You know what I want to do one day? I want to take the map of South Africa and take little like pins and just pinpoint where all our viewers are watching from and also where I've ministered at. Um, I've ministered in this country very extensively. I would say probably more than half of this country I've traveled, ministered in, and it will be interesting to do that list. It will be just be great. All right, so let me show you what has happened and what is happening. Um, so since the last time we spoke, we dedicated my grandson. So that was the dedication pictures. Uh, that is my son, Nikki and Tanil with little Nikki. That's Nikki number four, NJ4. And um, yeah, what a great legacy. Now, see how cute is this? That uh, dress, or not dress, sorry. <laughs> that uh, suit he has on or that outfit he has on was his dad's dedication uh, outfit. So that was his dad's 
dedication outfit, Nikki's dedication outfit. You tail it a little bit, and there he is um, now dedicated on the 24th of March. And what a just wonderful, great day! So awesome, isn't that awesome? That's a legacy, right there, Sue. Absolutely, legacy, legacy. That child <laughs> is changing my life. And then <clears throat> we had Michal obviously got married on uh, the 5th, 4th of April. Where am I now? I am so confused with all these dates. Let me get my dates right. Otherwise, they're going to take me out. And you as parents know, your children can take you out if you get the stuff wrong. So on the 4th of April, uh, Michal got married on the 31st I said 24th of March he was dedicated wasn't was on the 31st of March he was dedicated the 24th was his dad's birthday and um, so yeah let me just get make it clear right so Michal got married on the uh, 4th of April that was last week, Thursday, and then we had his bachelors. His brother organized his bachelors the day before. So we had to go and do uh, <laughs> laser hunting battlefield live in the forest. And there I'm standing with the two camouflage guys. And um, I'm telling you, it was so much fun. They gave me a rifle. I had, I had so much fun. I fell my knees open. My knees are still trying to recover. I couldn't get, even get on my knees for a couple of days. Just, just skin, just blood everywhere. But that was fun. And, um, you know, they laughed. Yeah, Dad, you must, you must stay with us. I said, listen, man, I'm outrunning all of you. I'm, I'm doing well for a 51-year-old, running with all these young people, cr climbing through rivers and bushes and shooting each other. So yeah, we, uh, we tried to stay young with these young people. So that was his bachelor's. It was fun, so much fun right there in Cape Town. So um, I'm so proud of the two of them. And then Michal got married. Look at this. Come on. Let's give a shout out there for, for these two. They looked beautiful. Gabby looked stunning. And Michal looks stunning. And um, I am just so proud of my, my children. So proud of them. Michal married the right woman there. And um, yeah, they are on their honeymoon at the moment. And there you can see Michal, Gabby. And there's the proud parents. My wife looked so beautiful. And uh, yeah, it was just an amazing, amazing wedding, an amazing day. So, co yeah, congratulations to the two of them. Um, like I said, look at that. Just an amazing, amazing couple. So congratulations to them. Now, I'll take you to another one quickly, and then we're going to get into the word. This is my mother. She stays in Cape Town. So uh, that's my mom. And... Um, she hold, held there, the little one. And there we see the grannies. My wife on the left, granny. And then great granny, great grandmother. And um, what an amazing, amazing picture of legacy. Isn't that beautiful? Just legacy. All you see is, is legacy, 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 legacy. All the way. And what else can I show you? There is little Nikki's first day on the beach. <laughs> His first day on the beach, first time he's put his feet on the sand. How good, how awesome is that? And there's my son, the morning of his wedding, just having breakfast with him. Now, let me tell you, that child is the happiest child. I I've, I've cannot tell, I'm telling you, that child is just one bundle of joy because his dad and his mom are such joyful people. Just incredible, incredible uh, child. And this child is just so amazing. So, well, that's about it from my side. And um, 
Thank you for all the wishes. Thank you for all the beautiful comments. Thank you for all the th things you're sharing. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, we are just so grateful to be a joyful, happy family. Praise the Lord. Well, before we get into this day, remember now, uh, in about two hours from now, I'm going to go live from our church property, the new one. I just want to go and have a look. I haven't been there for a long time. So I want to go and just walk around and just see what's happening. So come join me there if you want to. Click the subscribe and the like button, notification button, so that you can stay um, with us on this journey. Okay. My wife, uh, she's doing an incredible outreach right now as I'm speaking. I can hear her in the background. The Lord has given her this. Uh, I actually shared just a quick feed before we came on on what's happening outside. She, the Lord said to her, you know, just bring appreciation to domestic workers. For me, it was when she said it, I thought, well, OK, that's going to be interesting. Then this thing started unfolding, started small um, about two years ago. It's now year three, I think. And I'm telling you right now, we have 100 domestic worker ladies sitting outside. And my wife, what she does is she spoils them. I mean, you must see, go and have a look at the live feed just before this one, what she's doing, giving them gifts, like umbrellas to walk with, aprons, uh, just spoiling them, gifts, and giving them a good lunch, and just make them feel precious. And you know why? Because they do work hard in our homes. They work, they, they, they miss their families to work for us, and they take care of us. And I think it's a good initiative to have this. And um, I'm very proud of my wife and the Hardbeat team that support them. And I just give a shout out to them as well. Amen. Now, destinies, 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 destinies. I think a lot of people, uh, you know, speak about the word destiny. How is destiny? What is destiny? How can I fulfill my destiny? Um, I want to read you a scripture in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Be sober, uh, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Now, if you cannot define your enemy, you can never deal with him. Um, an enemy that is not identified can never be defeated. So I want to show you a couple of things here that I believe are enemies or hindrances to your destiny. So let's get into this. And I want you to write down a couple of scriptures. Stay with me in this. And uh, <clears throat> let's speak about the enemies or the hindrances to a destiny. Now, you are welcome to, um, you know, put, your, put some points in as well if you want to comment i mean just interact with me i may miss a couple of good points that you have but um let's start with this one i think the first hindrance to your destiny is the lack of discipline the lack of self-control that is something that i believe is a big hindrance a big obstacle if you want to use that to um identifying your destiny and fulfilling your destiny and um, the scripture there is in genesis ch uh, chapter uh, 25 verse number 34 it speaks about esau and his life you can go and read it that um, he had no discipline he just wanted to eat and and <clears throat> was hungry and sold his birthright birthright and all those things because of not being disciplined in his life. Now, a life of indiscipline is a destroyer of destinies. A destroyer of a destiny in all aspects. A man that cannot control uh, his life, how can he control his destiny? So that's the question. For me, it's like if you cannot control your life, how can you control the destiny God has given you? <clears throat> so a disciplined life, a disciplined uh, walk with God, prayer life, 
eating habits, all this stuff. A disciplined life will create a desired destiny for your life. So what is the first hindrance, I would say, to my destiny is an undisciplined life. If I don't have that right, I don't have self-control, I don't have discipline, I will not achieve my destiny in life. If you go and read all these biographies of great men of men, sorry, men of God and business people, you will go and see that they have a habit, a disciplined life. They'll wake up at five, they will read a book, they will do this, they'll do this. Discipline. Discipline, or you may rather say, your destiny hangs on discipline. It hangs on it. The second thing I believe is um, the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear that comes upon people. The fear of the unknown. The fear of, I don't know what the future holds. The fear of failure, the fear of um, scared of the fear that you might lose your income, fear of losing your family, fear of somebody will walk away with your company. All these fears are tied to a hindrance, I believe, of not fulfilling your destiny. You have to take risks in life. You have to walk on the edge. You have to, and you know what's amazing to me is that a lot of people say, I'm going to start my business. I'm going to, I'm going to do this business. Okay, start the business. Uh, I just want to get everything ready and then I'll start the business. No, start the business. No, I want to get everything in line. So fear is there. If, you don't gonna, if you're not going to take the risk of stepping out, then circumstances will push you out. And then you'll find yourself in this, in this world of, of unknown realities and unknown things i want to tell you this overcome the spirit of fear overcome that spirit of fear and say lord i don't live according to the spirit of fear but of love power and i have a sound mind in everything i do and take the risks in your life your destiny is waiting for you it's not coming easily it's not automatic it takes risks takes risks to do this, to establish this. As a matter of fact, my, uh, my son, Nicky, <clears throat> we had a lunch with um, his grandfather, his adopted grandfather. And if I say that, you know, when my dad died, my uncle, literally, and my aunt became the grandparents of my son, the, God, the godparents. So we had lunch on Sunday, He's turning 70 in a couple of days. And then he said this. He says, Nikki asked him, Dad, uh, Opa, Opa, uh, what is the one thing that you regret in life? And without a hesitation, he said, I, d I should have taken more risks in my life with my business. I could have been much further if I just took risks. And that was, oh, what words of wisdom was that? Playing safe will keep you very stagnant and will keep you very contained. Take the risks. Do that thing to get to your destiny. Number three, a lifestyle of disobedience and rebellion will not get you to your destiny. Uh, it is impossible. Impossible to be rebellious and fulfill your destiny at the same time. It, the one is going to give way to the other one. You can't be rebellious and fulfill a destiny at the same time. That's why rebellious people that leaves churches and they in rebellion go and start another church doesn't work. Because rebellion and fulfilling a destiny, it just doesn't match. Go and read it in Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 and 24 about Adam and Eve, tells you the whole story. It is impossible to have a destiny with rebellion, which is the sin of witchcraft at the same time. It's, it's not going to happen. Number four, I think uh, having a love for money, 
having a love for money, having a greed for money, th that thing will stop you from getting your destiny. The lifestyle of greed, the lifestyle of the love of money is a destroyer of destinies. You, know, you say, Pastor, why do you say that? Well, it destroyed Judas Iscariot, took him out completely. Just it's the same thing. So you have to understand if I start loving money, greed for money, uh, it will destroy my destiny. Why are you in business? And that is the key. The question, the golden question, why are you in business? Let's take a little bit further. Why are you doing church? Why are you in ministry? If it's just for money and fame, and I have to get it, I have to get this income right, I have to get this offerings, and I have to get this blah, 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 and, and, and it becomes greedy. Destinies will pull away from you. Destiny will walk away from you. It will not come to your life. Let me give you one more. <clears throat> I think the spirit of depression and discouragement can stop you from fulfilling the plan of God in your life. If you look at Elijah, he's, he went to sit under the juniper tree and he says, Oh God, just take my life. I can't handle this anymore. Hey, here's a whole destiny waiting for you. But because of um, this discouragement and because of having, um, what's the right word, depression upon his life, he nearly missed the plan of God for his life. So I want to close with this to say, I really want you to carefully, carefully assess your life. Go through your life. Identify the presence of any of these enemies I've, I've, I've mentioned. And then sort it out. Take a hold of it. Overcome it. Now the flip side of the coin is this. If I say these are the hindrances to my destiny, you can just flip the coin now and say, what are the the keys, the principles in fulfilling my destiny. Well, number one, I have discipline. Number two, I have a sound mind, not a spirit of fear. I live in obedience to God and I, I, um, uh, I don't love money, but I am a sower of, the, of, of finances and I don't live a, a depressed life. I am a joyful person. And then we solve the whole problem. Those are your five keys right there in the name of Jesus. So those are the things I wanted to share with you today from my heart and just encourage you and just for you to stand with, you know, your destiny. Don't let destiny go. Don't let destiny go. You are, remember that song, Destiny's Child. You are Destiny's Child. Destiny is calling you. You have a purpose of God in your life. Fulfill it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's from my side that I wanted to share with you today. And um, as we come in for a close, I want to speak this over you. Um, I speak the grace of the Lord over your life to exercise a victory over every spirit of delay and enemies to your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord, we declare that today there will come a turnaround, a new passion for your destiny. Fulfill the plan and the destiny of God for your life. May the destinies that are uphold, may the destinies that are just hanging be released from heaven upon your life. May the destiny of your business expand and become in, in flourishing. May the destiny of your church come into its full, full right. May the destiny of your life come into full right in the name of Jesus. No more delays, no more enemies. And may destiny wrap itself around you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, receive the blessing of the destinies of God upon your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, family, uh, two quick announcements. Very, very, very important. Please, I want you to hear this announcement. From the end of April, we will not be 
at 5 p.m. live on TV. However, we are going to be live on my pages um, for Supernatural Sunday nights. So I know a lot of your following is on, on social media, but if you follow us on TV, we're going to go off TV and we're just going to focus on, on YouTube and social media platforms. It's going to be the same concept. We're still going to have live intercessors. We're going to pray for you. I'm just not going to broadcast on TV anymore, but just on social media platforms. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be supernatural. Make sure to subscribe and follow these links that you don't miss out. We are creating an online church and you're going to be part of this. The good news is, no, let me not run ahead of myself, but there's coming good news to every online viewer very soon. And then I'm busy writing my book. So um, my book on revival will come out um, for soon. So pray with me that God will give me the right wisdom and understanding how we're writing it and putting it together. Very excited about this project. And then also I want you to be a partner of this ministry. Please, the details are on the screen. You can just go to our website and click partnership. Become a partner with me. Pray with me. I pray for you. You pray for me. We stand together. And I also want to say thank you to everybody who is givers into uh, the supernatural ministry thank you to all the sons thank you to all the daughters thank you to everybody who believes in this ministry your seed enables us to do great things for the lord so sow your seed into this bring your offering into this sow a seed a significant seed into the supernatural so that supernatural harvest can be your evidence in jesus name you know i love sowing I sow into this ministry. I, I sow into this myself, you know, because I believe in the supernatural power of harvest. Our church sows into this. Uh, our tithe goes into this ministry because it enables us to do so much for the Lord. And we see the harvest of God resting upon this ministry. So become a partner, sow a seed, and the Lord bless you richly. As a matter of fact, I bless every giver that sows into this ministry. May that seed produce supernatural harvest. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Family, we love you. And um, Sunday is church. Go to your local church. Support your local church. Watch us online at 5. And also remember to join in this afternoon's live feed. Around about... Let me not put a time, but we'll be in the next two to three hours. If you get a, if you just click the notification button, you'll 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 get it. So God bless you, and uh, see you next week.